about aging, healthy aging. What does it mean to be to to, um, to for for people when they say that they're aging healthfully? Um, and how are what are the opportunities for that in our community? Joining us now, Dr. Susan Friedman from Highland Hospital. She is a gerontologist, uh, and recently three doctors from Highland wrote an article, reviewed an article, I should say, um, and found uh, on gerontology and found that some of them sort of uh, failed to focus on healthy aging, right? It was mostly on sick patients, and you're saying that's a missed opportunity, isn't there? Yeah, so the, the impetus of this uh, paper was um, sort of looking at our practice patterns that uh, as geriatricians we tend to uh, take care of frail older adults, mm -hmm. and uh, we're, we're good at it. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, we understand the implications of frailty, and uh, we uh, help frail older adults to manage their chronic medical conditions. Um, but um, taking a step back from that, we look at the whole spectrum of older adults and we realize that um, most older adults, they're not frail and they don't particularly want to be. Mm -hmm. um, but we are seeing some disturbing population trends um, that suggest that that may increase in the future. Um, so frailty, frailty, uh, okay. and multiple chronic conditions. Okay. Really? So, yeah. So um, not just in older adults, but in, in middle-aged adults as well. That um, we see increasing patterns of sedentary behavior, mm. um, increasing rates of obesity, mm -hmm. um, increasing uh, you know poor nutritional status, mm -hmm. and um, down the line that translates mm -hmm. into. Uh, the onset of, of things like diabetes and high blood pressure and high cholesterol. And so, you know, the, the concern is that if we keep up with the trends that we're seeing, uh, we're going to have sicker, um, older adults. Mm -hmm. And um, so they're not going to le lead their healthiest possible lives, mm -hmm. and um, it's going to be difficult to have the resources to, to manage it all. Yeah, in terms of, of living and, and maybe living in a place where they could handle this boom mm -hmm. of people maybe who need more hands-on care? Right, right, exactly. Oh, geez, okay. So you're saying there's opportunities now to encourage yeah. your patients to be healthy now, right? right? And there's right. some key areas in which they can do that. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, if we look at examples around the world where people are aging well and healthily, um, there are these areas called the blue zones, um, which uh, they're in very different places geographically and culturally, but there are some commonalities in terms of um, uh, what happens there. And um, the, the outcome is that people live to their 90s, to 100 and beyond uh, with high levels of health, mm -hmm. um, with uh, good function, good quality of life. And the, really it boils down to three things. Okay. Um, the first is uh, nutrition, so a focus on plant-based whole foods nutrition, avoiding a lot of preservatives, a lot of processed foods. Um, the second is uh, activity, so um, uh, avoiding sedentary behavior. So, mm -hmm. you know, we think of activity as going to the gym for half an hour mm -hmm. and then, you know, sitting the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. But what people do in these, in these um, areas is that they're really active all the time. They're walking, they're doing their day-to-day -day activities. Um, and then the third uh, piece of it is what I call connectedness. So uh, really strong relationships with family, with friends, and uh, with the community at large. Hmm. And when all, of, all three of those things are in place, then people tend to uh, live more healthily um, and have a higher quality of life. Can I ask you, and we're going off topic, but I, the idea of social media and, and connectivity. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, I'm wonder, I wonder if uh, uh, researchers are looking at that. Yeah. Uh, you know, we talk about face-to-face, -face, getting right. together with your bridge group or with your, you know, your friends, but how does social media play a role in that connectivity? I'm yeah. curious to know, you don't have to answer now, I'm just saying, I'd love to hear. Right. Yeah. You know, you know I, I don't. That. I don't know of any research that has has yeah. looked into that. But um, you know, I, I suppose it's it's a way to connect. We're seeing when, older folks now getting on social media a lot. Absolutely. You know, and Facebook I think as the around. baby boomers get into that age mm -hmm. range, we're going to see yeah. more of that as well. It's interesting. I've always I've always kind of wondered that. Yeah. Especially because they're often sitting down or sitting at the computer as that happens. Right, yeah. right. We need to have ways that they stand and connect and, <laughs> yeah, so um, sort of mixing the connectedness piece of it with, with activity. Right. So there's hope then for people who maybe are on that path, like you said, to becoming more frail, to enter, enter uh, seating now and saying, let's, let's make some changes. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think there's a lot 
more that's in our hands than we may realize. Excellent. Doctor, thank you so very much for that mm, advice. Very encouraging. Yeah, it got me thinking. <laughs> mm. Your local headlines are coming up next.